endangered species. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gary Summers. Thank you, Commissioners. I'm uh, here standing in for Bill Reeves, our non-game coordinator. He's got a uh, budget expansion. Uh, this is for a non-game project. Actually started several years ago with uh, <coughs> federal funding. It's 75% federal funding. It was um, surveying for birds, small mammals on some of our wildlife management areas in East Tennessee. <coughs> and we did that, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, more or less wrapped those projects up. We didn't spend all the money, and now the clock is ticking on the federal money. We've got uh, until the end of our fiscal year to, uh, to spend it or it will revert. And uh, so Bill wants to take this money and, and um, mostly buy supplies for continuing um, uh, small mammal surveys and bird surveys on, uh, on our wildlife management areas. So we're asking for a budget expansion of $35,000. This is 75% federal money. You've already committed this money, we just move it somewhere else. Uh, yeah, the money's already in a federal grant, yes. Anybody have any questions? Comments? Anyone in the audience? Um, committee, uh, can I get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Second. We move and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. John? <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, I have another opportunity for the Commission to expand the budget. Um, uh, the expansion would be for $275,000. Um, 270,000 of that is uh, federal uh, PR dollars with a, uh, a match of uh, 5,000 that comes from state dollars and we're teaming with uh, um, uh, the land trust for Tennessee who will pay the, uh, the remainder of the, the match on this piece of property. What it is is 68 acres that borders the Hiawassee Refuge. You see it there in red. Uh, it's um, it's a great piece of property and it goes right along with the, the terrain of Hiawassee Refuge and um, we're uh, seeking approval for, for this expansion. Anyone have comments, questions? Audience? Motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. John, you must have been a marketing major. You start off with the commission, giving the commission an opportunity. I've, I've learned very well from, from Assistant Director <laughs> Nat Johnson. Yes, sir. I, I like it when he calls me in the day and says, John, I have an opportunity for you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mine's better, Commissioner Parks. Mine's all federal dollars without any state dollars. <laughs> but this budget request is for $357,050. And what it is, it's a boating infrastructure grant, federal dollars, all federal pass-through dollars, and the, uh, it's for Norris Dam Marina. Their plans are to build an additional 21 uh, transient slips with a catwalk and also with laundry and shower facilities. Any questions from, from the uh, commission? It's all federal money. All federal money. I'll make a motion. Second. We move to the second that we approve the budget expansion. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. John? Well, my days in the real estate, I was always last and didn't mind, but when you're asking for money, I'm not sure if it's good to be towards the end. Uh, first one I have, uh, 
uh, pesticide control of Hemlock Willie Adelgid. Uh, the agency's been working with uh, trying to control. We, I guess most of you know we have a, a exotic pest that's really working some devastation on the hemlock species all across the eastern United States. And oh, a number of years ago, the commission approved a budget where we're partnering with TDEC and UT and the Forest Service in growing uh, what they call a predator beetle that feeds on the hemlock woolly adelgid. And that program has been going on for some time. And uh, we've had beetles released at North Cumberland Wildlife Management Area and our Foothills Wildlife Management Area, and it's showing some promising results. Some of the other treatments are uh, some fungicides, soil treatments, and you can even treat the tree itself. And it kind of depends on your the lay of the land and how easy it is to get back in to do some of those other treatments. Uh, the governor, previous governor, recognized that uh, we needed to kind of pull all our hats together and try to think about what we're going to do to at least save some of the hemlocks, especially on those important watersheds where we have habitat issues, uh, the coolness of the water and things for our native species. So we're, we're looking uh, and what that committee has come up with, and it's been a whole host of folks and Nature Conservancy, uh, all three of the agriculture kind of interests, TDEC, Ag, us, uh, Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, and many others have gotten together in a committee, and they're looking to try to keep about 10% of the goal is to try to save about 10% of the hemlocks, especially on our public lands, and do those in the areas that's the most important. Uh, on North Cumberland Wildlife Management Area, we've just recently received some uh, aerial evaluation of how many acres of hemlocks we had. We had about uh, let's see, it was 50,000, no, that sounds too big, yeah, 50,000, yeah, I, I think it's 50,000 acres of hemlock, and so we're trying to save about five, and uh, to do that, we needed to start being able to use some of these other treatments besides the beetles. Last month, you saw a uh, TACME, a company we'd worked with about a power line, donated a $20,000 check to the agency. And what we want to do with that is this, in this budget expansion is to jumpstart doing some of these other treatments for the Hemlock Willie Adelgid. So we're asking for a budget expansion using the money that was donated last month to the agency. John, is it uh, is the terrain such that air spraying or spraying from a plane can't work? We last fall we did our first treatment of a fungicide from an aerial application. It does look promising, and some of this would go to that type of an application, but it also would go to some of the other treatments like soil treatments and all. You know, some can be used in certain situations, so we're looking to use all different methods. Uh, for whatever that on the ground situation presents us. Are the other types of treatments done in an area where the beetles have not been placed or is it not hurt them? Yeah, no, it would be in areas that we couldn't or we don't we don't have enough beetles. They're they're real intensive to grow. Uh, they're what we were funding as a partner through the budgets that you all have given us over the years. Uh, was to increase the number of beetles being grown, but it's not near enough to, to take care of all, this, all the places we have where the adelgid are impacting the hemlock. Any more questions? I make a motion. Second. Move and second that we approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Maybe this one is an opportunity. <laughs> We've had the, a, a neighboring landowner to our Morristown Hatchery in Hamblin County uh, talk to our uh, hatchery manager about maybe he has it's about a 168 acre tract, and uh, 
he's come to us and offered to sell uh, 15 acres that adjoins our hatchery. And this would allow us to, to put in five to six ponds, somewhere around two acres each, to, to help uh, grow additional crappie and, and uh, walleye, I think, were the two big species, if I remember right, Bobby, uh, at, that we would expand our grow-out pond space uh, to, to utilize would be the crappies and, and uh, walleye. Uh, this is 75% uh, federal dollars. The other 25% are from agency uh, license revenue state dollars. And the total price is about $95,000. And that's based on the landowner's uh, estimate on what he wants. Of course, the appraisal uh, will determine what we actually end up paying. Any questions? We'll pay more even if, if the appraisal is more, we'll have to pay more? Well, we'd have to come back to you to pay any more because the, the budget would put a top limit on it, but the appraisal will be what the state will allow us to, to offer the man. Any other questions? Motion to approve? I think a motion to approve. <laughs> second. We move to this and second and we uh, approve this expansion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Vehicle replacement. Thank you on that. Uh, we got where to start on this one. Uh, we, I know you all. We've we've come to you and talked to you about our vehicle situation uh, back in 1999, 2000, and, and a few since then. Uh, the agency purchased several vehicles with federal dollars. When we buy the vehicle with the federal dollars, it, they don't allow us to pay depreciation. So when those vehicles get worn out, we basically have to buy the vehicle again. And I have three that are up for replace, well, they need to be replaced some time ago, but this, they're getting up around 183,000, I think one has, another one has over 200,000, we're talking 1999, 2000 model, pickup trucks and uh, we're asking for this budget expansion to to kind of repurchase those vehicles because of the situation we had when we bought them with federal dollars and not allowed to buy the depreciation you normally we de pay that depreciation and then when the vehicle comes for replacement we've already put that money into a pot downtown at general services and MVM to get the next vehicle uh, you know, over to the agency and then we pay depreciation during the life of that vehicle. And But with these federal dollars, that system doesn't work that way. So we're here asking for $67,000 to to buy those three vehicles that were bought in 99, 2000 uh, with federal dollars. Any questions? We'll get a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Second. Move to the second, we approve the vehicle replacement expansion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Andy Husky. Thank you all. Now this budget expansion concerns the council to advance hunting and shooting sports. Uh, this council was established in uh, 2010 <coughs> and basically what they're asking for at this point is a $25,000 match, a grant from us. And it would be all federal money, uh, all the money that we would be giving them would be federal money. <coughs> and basically what this council wants to do is they want to create a partnership with industries and NGOs and state agencies. And what they're doing, they're going around all the states right now, and they're asking for all states to go ahead and jump on board and, and create this council. <clears throat> and what they want to do, their goal is, is to create a yearly stream of money. They want to raise about $50 million. And each year they want to give each state a million dollars. 
Uh, and this money can be used to, uh, to hire a recruitment and retention person. It can be used for marketing, uh, advertising costs, uh, whatever, whatever we deem it fit to use the money as. Um, but currently, that's, that's what they're asking right now is, is for $25,000 one time. Um, and and that's, the, that's the proposal that we have before you. Any questions? Is it this agency money? Or it's, it's federal money. It's all federal oh, money. This is all federal. It's all federal okay. money. Yes, sir. This is seed dollars. So it's seed dollars. It's what it looks like, yeah. Okay. And if it pans out, you know, we'll, we stand to, to gain a lot. Good. Yeah. Good yeah. On our yeah. Because they're they're going to take this money and they're going to go to all these NGOs and and uh, industry partners and say all 50 states are on board. They've already given us this seed money, uh, and they're basically going to ask them for some matching funds, and then they're going to take that matching funds and and dole it back out to the states. Any questions? I make a motion. Second. Move and second to approve this budget expansion. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Board? Thank you, Chairman Parks, Commissioner. Uh, in addition to the two opportunities that John and John gave us for uh, acquisition of two new properties, uh, one in Hamlin and Meg County. Uh, <clears throat> we have a, a couple of other small items to go over with you on the real estate report. Uh, in Cumberland County at Catoosa, we have a uh, 200 acres that has uh, been requested by Crossville Coal Company for exploration of uh, coal. Uh, this uh, is a right of entry for them to go on the property and to explore the ex, uh, for coal. Uh, this has been taken to the first step of the State Building Commission, the staff, and it's been forwarded with recommendations to the Executive Subcommittee. Uh, in Greene County, we had a transaction with Mr. Hadley Carter where we were reconveying property to him that he gifted to us uh, a few years ago. It was for a boat ramp and access area that we did not use, so we are conveying it back to him. Uh, this transaction has been completed in Mr. Carter. Uh, he now has his, his land back. In Hancock County, we have the Sneedville Utility District uh, conveying a water line easement to them. This has gone to the Executive Subcommittee of the Building Commission on the consent agenda. Uh, in Lake County, we had a 25-year lease with the Real Foot uh, Area Tourism Council for an existing house located on the former White's Landing property. Uh, this lease has been completed and uh, the Tourism Council, I believe they have taken possession of the house. At Tumbleweed Wildlife Management Area, we have a conveyance of 0 .0256 acres this is to the to Lake County to allow the Department of Transportation to build a bridge uh, on Parker Road over running Real Foot Bayou. This is going to the Executive Subcommittee on the Consent Agenda also. Uh, and down in Robinson County, we have uh, the final deed in review by the Attorney General's office and we should be closing this transaction out within, say, the next two weeks. But if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Any questions? Commissioner Parks. Yes. Just a matter of clarification on the Marshtown Fish Hatchery. This is showing budget expansion of 71000 I'm assuming that's a typo since we just voted on 95000 Oh, that's correct. It is a typo. Thanks, sir. My apologies. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. I just had a couple more things. If whenever is a good time to say it, well, as they say down at the legislature, I'm pointing a personal privilege. <laughs> when Bobby was going over the stuff while I go about trout, uh, 
my dad and I used to fish the Little Tennessee River all the time. It's just that's what he loved to do. He liked to trout fish so much that at his funeral, they read the 23rd Psalm, and the preacher actually said they lead him beside still waters filled with trout. And he went on. So, uh, so he was quite the trout fisherman. When I was at UT, and I was thinking I was so smart. I went home one day. I said. Dad, you know there's four species of trout? He said, yep, baked, broiled, fried, and smoked. <laughs> I said, yep, that's right. That's, but anyway, I, that's what I was thinking of when he was going over all that. And sorry that Owen Schroeder left. Uh, Owen is a longtime outdoor writer. He was here with us earlier. I wanted to acknowledge him while he was still here. I guess he had to leave early. But uh, he's uh, been one of the probably the longest term outdoor riders that we've had in the state for a long time. And I know I'll see him at the Outdoor Riders Association meeting down in Chattanooga on April the 19th, I think it is. So anyway, I'm glad that he was here. I also wanted to mention to you that this thing that, that uh, Randy was talking to you about on the, the uh, shooting sports thing, that's, that's been ongoing for a while. This is the 75th anniversary of the Pittman-Robertson Act, and this ties into that somewhat, and there's going to be a special presentation sometime at the end of the year that the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies is putting together to recognize the significant contribution of that piece of legislation, what it's done for wildlife management for years and years. It's also the 75th anniversary of Ducks Unlimited, and uh, they're going to have the National Convention here in Nashville, at Opryland, uh, in late May, and I was thinking that it might be appropriate if, if the, leg if the uh, commission would maybe consider a resolution at the next meeting just congratulating Ducks Unlimited on, on their 75th anniversary. And, and since Harold is the incoming, excuse me, Commissioner Cannon is the, the uh, incoming uh, chair of Ducks Unlimited, who happened to be born on the same day that they were formed. Uh, he, let me think about that. <laughs> well, let me rethink that. But anyway, I, I just want to make, make sure you knew that. And on, Another thing, uh, Leatherwood Access Area, and I'll make sure Dwight tells me I'm right on this one, but we started working with the Representative Willie Borchard on building Leatherwood Access Area. When he was still in the legislature, I expect they'll finish that this week. But, so that's been a long time coming, but it's, I know the people down there are very excited. I think it's the only state-owned access area in Stewart County, if I'm somewhere in that neighborhood of being right. But on the sad side of that, and I don't see Nat back in here, but I understand that uh, Representative Borchard uh, had to be rushed to the hospital this morning with, with some kind of pretty serious health condition. Haven't heard back anything f since he, he went in, but I understand that we'll, we'll let you know tomorrow of any updates that we have. But I just talked to him the other day. He was all excited about maybe going over there and having some kind of public recognition ceremony. And, but anyway, I, was, I wanted you to know that. Um, to also tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock, we'll have... 11 brand new officers graduating from Tennessee Law Enforcement Training Academy. It probably is going to conflict with the, with the rest of the commission meeting, so I, I don't know that anybody here will be able to have the opportunity to go, but if you do, you're absolutely more than welcome to be there. They have a ceremony, of course, for all those graduating. There's usually 100 or to 125 that will graduate and, and 11 of those hours. We have a tradition of a lot of times being the class president or somewhere in that hierarchy. And on a sadder piece of news, uh, Region 4 has been really hit hard over the last three or four months with personnel problems in terms of uh, either sickness or death. And, and uh, a lot of you may not know Melody Hetter, but she, Hetler, excuse me, she was uh, one of the secretaries there in the Region 4 office. If you ever call there, it's probably who you would talk to uh, in terms of routing the phones around. But she unexpectedly had a, a problem and was taken life flooded to Vanderbilt and, and subsequently died this week. And her funeral services will be tomorrow at, uh, at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., at the Stubblefield Funeral Home in Morristown. So just thought I'd let you know that for sure. And, of course, our thoughts and prayers have been with that family and the people in the Region 4 office who have just really had more than anybody should have to put up with in terms of sadness over one short period of time. But... Anyway, those are all the announcements I think I have for right now, but I did just wanted you to know all those things. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments from the commission? Anyone from the audience? Any comments? All right. Uh, we'll, uh, that'll wind up this meeting then, which we'll be meeting in the morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>